not feel like this. Oh! <laughs> I hope you guys are ready for an hour of Reggie and, well, me. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Oh yeah. Elves, truly one of God's greatest failures. Legend has it that 2700 years ago, a dumpster full of roadkill and genetic material was struck by lightning, and from it emerged a series of grotesque abominations that we now refer to as the elves. I know this because <laughs> it was my dumpster, and I saw the whole thing. Ever since oh that day, God. it has been my personal mission to wipe them off the face of the earth. And today, in Total Warhammer 3... You know, at least Reggie's taking responsibility for all this. We're going to be doing just that. Because we're playing as the Beastmen, a gang of marauding... <gasps> Ooh, Torox. Okay, this is the guy with uh, momentum, yeah? You can consecutively continue to do battles, like multiple battles per turn. And I mean, also lore-wise, the enemy of the elves, basically. And barely sentient savages that want nothing more than to crush your skull with a gigantic boulder. Our goal is to reach Ulthuan, destroy everything, and erect several herdstones so that no one can ever settle these tainted lands again. Do we have... I mean, never mind. I, I think Torox is the enemy of the Wood Elves, but I guess High Elves also count as Elves, so yeah. What it takes, or will a late game crisis cause me to annihilate my computer? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> okay, here we are in the uh, Obsidian Peaks. The second we have scenario. an army led by Torox the Brass Bull. In case you're unfamiliar with Torox, he's he's a one-man killing machine. I've never personally seen him cry, and he instills great terror in me on a daily basis. The rest of his army is composed of Understood. Undor herds and uh, a couple of Minotaur. The Minotaur are quite good. In fact, Torox specializes in them, so hopefully late game we'll be able to make an entire army of angry bull people. The Ungor are... Doomsday. They're like the lower class, second class beastmen. You know, no one respects them. They barely meet the threshold for being considered mm. sentient. So, <laughs> goddamn. Uh, wait, let's see. One of their traits is expendable. So it's basically like the, the Skaven meat shields, the Skaven slaves in that uh, instance. I, I wonder if it gives you the same benefits, like you don't lose leadership or morale or whatever it's called, whenever uh, these troops die. Mm. But they also have a poor leadership debuff, so they would rout super easily. And generally, you want to just kind of throw them into suicidal situations to allow your Minotaur to, you know, flank and, and, and do the things they need to do. Okay, so the first yeah. thing we're going to want to do is introduce ourselves to our neighbors. Oh, now, that? our neighbor is Hello a there. dark elf, a uh, sex criminal, almost certainly. All dark elves are. <laughs> and her name is Alyssa, Basically, but everyone yeah. calls her a pedophile. So we're going to just start by killing her at Clark. Karond. Now this is a Pyrrhic victory, and I could I could auto resolve this easily, but sometimes you have to make a statement. This is a siege mm, battle. I hate let's see those. Jesus Christ. Okay, I've made the horrible mistake of accidentally accepting a siege battle, but we're going yeah. to make the most of it. You can see here that Torox <laughs> is, uh, he's just a hulking monstrosity, but his one weakness is that he's hes fairly large and susceptible to being shot by archers. Now, on the other mm. hand, archers are fairly susceptible I mean, very to tanky, being chopped into assume. small pieces by Torox. So as that you can see true. here, the virgin dark elf is just no match for the Chad Minotaur. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that guy's entire <laughs> torso exploded. Wow, okay. Even I was- This is a very different feel from Reggie's main channel videos, and I kind of like it. It's just a, a lot more slower paced. Wasn't expecting that. Alright, so we've achieved victory in our first attack, and we've managed to sustain some casualties. Uh, now, just, mostly uh, that's because few. this was a siege battle, and I refuse to play siege battles on anything other than three times speed. It's a moral stance I take because I don't like them. But the important thing here yeah. is that we can now convert this settlement into a herdstone. You see, beast men don't really play like a traditional faction, they're a horde faction, so mostly mm -hmm. we just run around messing up everyone else's day. In fact, I'm going to make this herdstone here, and what this does is it has converted the entire region into a blood grounds, which you can see here by all this, this red area. Uh. And the more blood I can collect in the blood grounds, then the higher level ritual I can perform. Once I perform the ritual, it basically kind of like desecrates all of these settlements so that no one can settle them again as long as this herdstone is here. So the gameplay- Gotcha. Uh, thank goodness they added these herdstones because from what we learned from Mandalore's video of these horde factions, they just didn't really have anything going for them before. The loop is to make a herdstone, 
kill a bunch of shit, perform a ritual to get rewards, and then no one then can go settle make this area one. pretty much ever again. And so that's the yeah. tactic we're going to be using to deal with the elves. We're going to make a series of herd stones, hopefully on the inner ring of Ulthwan, and then Ulthwan, it, it, it'll be uninhabitable. That's as God intended, Ulthwan will be just, it will belong <laughs> to the God beasts. God intended. Okay, so we can technically build some things at the Herdstone. Mostly, it's just very simple things to help us kill more people. Personally, I enjoy the Winds of Malady. It has a small chance of creating a plague that can affect our enemies, and whenever they get in a fight with us, they start off the fight winded, which is really not oh. the state you want to be in when this guy is trying to kill you. Now, obviously, sure. the goal here is to go go to Ulthwan and slaughter as many elves as possible, but... I believe the winded is basically when your units are tired, and then the... well... Uh, does it affect units with perfect vigor? I would think not, but from my understanding it kind of reduces your stats by like 20 or 30%, which is pretty substantial, especially if a uh, Torox is running straight at you, just as Reggie said. Honestly speaking, the elves are pretty strong, so we're going to need to develop our society a little further, unlock some better units, and just get some practice in on these surrounding factions. And then we'll move south and hop the ocean, go to Althwan, okay. and uh, see how that goes. So the blood drive continues with Venom Glade. If I can destroy this, I'll get six points. And then we're up to Circle of Destruction. Oh, lovely place. It'll, it'll be a great time. Let's actually start with the Circle of Destruction. We also have this me- This is actually so good for me as a new player. Because we're kind of not like doing the, the fast meme edits. We're just slowly explaining the game tactics and the, the thought process and strategy. And I, I don't really think this is like a completely insane kind of like challenge run. This is basically Torox's gameplay. Which, uh, yeah, as I said, it's just great for me as uh, somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Meter here. It's basically like a momentum meter. It's called Bestial Rage. And the higher it is, the more benefits we get. And the lower it is, well, it starts messing with us. And the way you fill it is by killing a lot of people in a short amount of time. So this really uh, incentivizes like a meathead play style of just killing everything nearby you at all times. Not great for mm -hmm. politics, but it really simplifies your decision making research process. research is pretty simple. It's like a flow chart that just looks like, is it alive? I mean, yes, it makes sense. kill it. Yeah, basically. Okay, fantastic. We've achieved victory. The elves are dead, and my bestial rage bar is quickly filling. Almost when it gets at max. max level, I start slamming my forehead on the desk in excitement. So we're going to raise this <laughs> settlement, and that's going to give us some points towards our ritual. You can see a a fireball forming above this uh, herdstone. Very nice. That's good. It's a good thing. Now you may be wondering, why do we want to perform these rituals at the Herdstone in the first place? Like, what does it do for us? Well, it gives us ruination. The more ruination oh, we you have, get more... the more units we can feel. Yeah. I need 60 more marks of ruination, and then I can feel the sand gores. Or, a hundred more to feel the minotaurs. So this is kind of like how we research things. Okay, I see. I mean, all these units look... Pretty cool. I wasn't initially interested in playing any of the, the Beastmen, but uh, now with the changes that they have, they, they do look pretty fun. And like the fact that you don't really have to worry about like the settlement game or like managing all of your cities as much is uh, also a plus. We can only have a limited amount of each of these units, but once we have them unlocked, we can spend Dread to increase our unit capacity until we can field an entire army of Cygors, Gorgons, Elemental of Beast, Jabber Slice, all of the weird things you just generally don't want to encounter when you're playing a, a human army. Yeah, Additionally, basically. we can gather Dread. This is just our primary resource. We can gather Dread to unlock new heroes and lords. Now, this is one thing that I've learned about playing the Beastmen. I used to feel annoyed when I would destroy a city. See, with a circle of destruction. Well, that one was that city was really asking for it, but I would destroy the city <laughs> and then another army would come in and colonize it. I would take that personally, but it's actually a good thing because then I can destroy the city again and rack up more points. So we really just uh -huh. want to be running the clock up, killing as many people so, I mean, as possible, destroying yeah, as many cities us, as possible. And sometimes your enemies will actually just help you in that regard. Um, and it looks like Kylostra... I, I always used to pronounce it army, Kloistra. Though. Anyway, it looks like Slostra... That's what I read it, it as. It looks like this fat fucking fish lady is going to take the <laughs> settlement. So once we finish off the elves down here, she'll be the oh, next good. target. Okay, we're moving on the Venom Glade. This will be the last outpost from the, uh, the Dark Elf faction. Okay, I took a few casualties because I was too lazy to fight that battle manually, but their, uh, their faction is now extinct, which is very nice for us. 
And fortunately the for the Beastmen, it doesn't actually Rip. cost me anything to recruit new units, and there's no upkeep either. These kind of funny little goat people, they don't have a very profound understanding of personal finance, so I can field a pretty large army and replenish my army without too much trouble. An oddly pleasant experience playing the Beastmen so far, I won't lie. We've just been issued a quest to defeat this army. Now, I'm going to warn Ooh. you, it's never just this army. The quest always says, oh, just kill some Dark Elves. Reinforcements expected, there, though. There's like 500,000 people. So we're going to want to improve our military a little more before we uh, before we tackle that one. Okay, Silostra has colonized the Venom Glade. We're going to go back there and beat the ever-living shit out of her. Now, technically speaking, Silostra is, I think, rank 81, and we're strength rank 151. So on paper, we should have no chance of killing her. But I am a animal, a wild beast <laughs> of the woods. I run around on all fours and, and bite He's people talking and about real life true. rabies. And furthermore, I don't know how numbers work. So this whole strength rating system, I'm just going to disregard it for the entire playthrough. Okay, we could auto-resolve this, but it would kill just, you lose so just many about ships, everyone. Though. So we're going to fight yeah. them. But before we go any further, I have to tell you something. War Thunder is the most there comprehensive vehicle combat Let's go. ever made. And it's available for free on PC and Sponsorship consoles. Sponsorships, I'm not bad. Over As a content tanks, creator, this is what is a ships, lifeblood. Ranging from the that keeps us going. Of old to the modern tanks and jets is, we have today. Uh, not Choose guaranteed. your favorite weapons so. and allow War Thunder to envelop you like a warm blanket. Maybe someday. With its detailed vehicles, Maybe someday I'll randomly do an ad read. Authentic sound Surprise effects. you guys out of nowhere. There are over 70 million people that want to liquefy you with a 120 millimeter smooth bore cannon. So I suggest you dive in today and do. start fighting them off. Personally, I enjoy the damage <laughs> x-rays, which help explain what happens to the human body after it has been hit by 50 BMG. That is Other pretty funny. That, the variety of games Game modes and customization options are fantastic. I know that and the game um, is so well optimized. A lot of our members really enjoy playing War Thunder. I want you to use my sign-up link in the pinned comment to download the game for free. I played it a super long time ago when it was released, but haven't Xbox. gone back It'll to it. It'll give you a bonus pack with since. multiple premium vehicles, an XP boost, seven days premium account, and 100,000 silver lions, along with my personal I felt like it was just kind of like a affection. Thank you, War Thunder. Now back too to much the video. of a grind. These things are a little concerning, just just visually. I don't like the looks of this. They bits, are very disconcerting. Otherwise, I'm sure we'll be okay. Yeah, this is... This is looking a lot better here. Solastra's, this is fine. Uh, army is largely disintegrating. There's a couple of more hardy units on the map, like Ooh. the Damned Knights Errant. She is... She's relatively tough, but... You know what? They're just all blobbing up around Torox, and that's just... That's never going to be a winning strategy, so... This should be fine. Okay, Silostra's main army has been defeated, and so this battle should basically pave the way for our war path all the way through her empire. She'll probably have a couple of secondary armies that we might have to fight, but usually this early in the game, when you kill the main enemy, it's pretty much it. Unsurprisingly, she's decided it might be a nice time to call for a peace treaty. She's offered me her Makes entire sense. inheritance. I don't know what numbers are, I don't care. Since we're a horde faction, we don't really have any cities per se, but Torox himself is kind of his own mobile city. And you can see we can kind of upgrade these little buildings to get access to new units. And currently we have unlocked the Gore Herd, which are slightly better than the Ungore, but I still don't respect them personally. However, <laughs> these guys have great weapons. Gotcha. That's pretty nice. So we're gonna get a few of them. Probably okay, a little well, bit stronger. Waited around for a little while, but our enemies don't want to push into the blood grounds. They're actually kind of hiding uh, out over here. So I think what I'm sense. going to do is just perform our ritual right now. We'll get 22 marks of ruination. That's not great. But it'll, you know, it's a start. Once we get 25, we reach Ruination level 2. That unlocks all of these things here, you can see. And it allows us to field more armies. So mo the more Ruination we have, the, the more capacity we have to field armies and uh, more capacity for each individual unit. Right now, nothing great. But I am having a grand old time walking around in uh, Silostra's territory and just disregarding her entire existence because I'm really not worried about her. Okay, Dang. this is the capital city. City of Valiant the defeat. Vampire Pirates, the Twisted Glade. I don't actually like our odds right now. Giving us a yeah. Valiant defeat, high casualties. That's not good. But looking at her army, it doesn't look that terrifying. The vampires usually have a, a lot of really powerful ranged units, but she has like one, two, three... I guess these deck droppers are kind of annoying. Uh, I don't know. I'm not that worried. I'll just lay siege to them okay. because I really don't like fighting siege battles. So hopefully they'll come out and attack me. Mm, oh, good plan. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that in the background. Alithanar just finished off 
uh, Silostra Direfin's army. So this is, she's in a pretty desperate situation now, which is why she's come out of her gates and she's trying to attack me. Um, but then I'll take the fight. You have a pure victory if you want to resolve this. just walk at them. We're just going to walk them down. Also, as Beastmen, a lot of our units are actually hidden just by being, you know, kind of in the forests and, and near the forest. Like, the, it's hard for our mm. enemies to see exactly where we're at. So, so we, we can't can start shooting creep you. up on people pretty good before, before they see us. Okay, this is going all right. Um, some of my units are just being absolutely annihilated by bats, and that's a little suboptimal, but otherwise I, I'm not detecting too it many happens. issues with any of this. Something you have to try to avoid in this game. This is just beginner stuff, and I it happens to me all the time. Blobbing your units up like this, there's no need for it. Get the yeah. units out and around, and then try to circle on your enemies. Hit them from behind, you do a lot more damage. This is kind of my issue at the moment. It's because I have never played any RTS games before, and the amount of uh, actions per minute I can do is extremely limited. Like, I probably said this before in previous videos, but I have played League of Legends before. I've only ever played tanks, because that's just kind of been my thing. And uh, the amount of actions required is not that much. You just have to have like a good map awareness and a good sense of strategy of when to push. So it's certainly been an experience playing through the Warhammer tutorial campaign and uh, now currently playing through Gorok's campaign. Just trying to make sure my units don't uh, needlessly get blobbed up and do basically nothing. Because I think there's also, um, uh, if you have too many units around one particular enemy, they don't actually do damage to it because they're unable to even like hit it because of you know hitboxes and whatnot so yeah it's uh it's a learning process get at their archers helps a lot oh this is a great opportunity for me to summon a Cygor and see how that goes there he is big man big man throw a boulder at all these little men how about dang that okay. missed we need to work on the aim but everything else <laughs> great <laughs> Even being within like a hundred feet of Torox is a real occupational hazard. If, it doesn't matter if you're on his team or not. He's just killing everything out here. Okay, <laughs> enemy army is basically fully crumbling. We're just waiting for them to give up at this point. It there does. it is. Okay, so we've exterminated the vampires. The drowned are now its faction destroyed, and I've taken the the twisted glade as the next herdstone, meaning that our new blood grounds is oh, it's actually much wider. A lot of overlap. But I definitely have to kill the Black Forests and the Monoliths. Which means good old Alithanar is, uh, well, he's he's going to have to die. Oh, All right, next target yeah, is going to be Alithanar. Who Lord. is Alithanar? I don't know. An insane psychopath. He was dropped on his head as a baby and he fell down 42 flights of stairs. So now Damn. I'm going to perform a... Uh, I can't even compare. I remember back as a kid, I, I did fall down like three flights of stairs. Thankfully, I was going to go out for like a, a scooter ride. Just take my scooter out in the town. And I was wearing a, a bicycle helmet, so... Maybe I didn't suffer any brain damage, but who knows. I did grow up to become a VTuber, so... Maybe something did end up wrong with me. Uh, late Steve... <laughs> what am I talking about, bro? I'm just, like, rambling. He's got some strong <laughs> weapons, and he's also level 14. And That's how it'd be. Yeah, his, ar his army looks... <sighs> this is gonna suck. Alright, we can do it. Actually, a question. Does Reggie stream at all? Uh, I could probably easily just go into the description and try and find like a Twitch link. There probably isn't though. I haven't noticed one. But uh, if he does, let me know. So, yeah, this is a valiant, valiant defeat auto resolve. This is a Pyrrhic victory uh, auto resolve. Whoa. Against my better judgment, I think I'm going to try to fight this just because all of his army is just, there's no it's front you put line. The banner it's on him. just archers, which means that I should just be able to run them down. 90% of our army is hidden. Positionally, they might have a hard time accounting for that. You can see the balance of power is certainly mm. not in our favor. Okay, any second now, I'm expecting to get shot in the side of the head with an arrow. And there it is. Oh my god. <laughs> we just kind of walked into a bunch of hidden shadow warriors and they're they're gonna focus fire the minotaurs down pretty hard but i think we can close the gap on them in this relatively short time frame i think we can do it once we make contact with them they're gonna have a really hard time getting away okay that's yeah. good we've got them on the run now we've engaged as long as them you're with the minotaurs. Them. usually these elves they're very annoying because they can shoot and move at the same time they're just dreadful to interact with this is just going to be a painful fight because it's going to be me chasing archers with infantry which is like not good for any one. Like, no one enjoys mm -hmm. that experience. The infantry hate it. 
The archers really hate it, and the people managing the units, it's just <laughs> painful. All right, the battle's just about <laughs> done. All that's left is, well, everyone's dead except for Olithanar, so we just have to go find him and chop him up a few times. There he is. As, as soon as I targeted a Broken, Lithanar with very the cyborg, tired. He, uh, he started running away. What's wrong, buddy? Don't want to be crushed by a gigantic boulder? It's a shame. Who would? It's like the nicest thing that I could possibly do to you, given all of the options. <laughs> okay, we're getting close to unlocking the fire pit, which will finally allow us to unlock Minotaurs. You better believe my entire army is, by late game, just going to be Minotaurs. We're going to continue our path up to the monoliths. What is that? Hopefully is that the sort of fight in the distance? Go to the monoliths, decisive victory, easy loot and raise. This gives us yeah, and the a few there. things, but most importantly, gives us enough money to construct the fire pit. Okay, by utilizing the beast paths, I've managed to sneak my way into a Lithanar's territory, and I'm going to take the Black Creek Spire. Shouldn't be hard at all. And this will be our next herdstone. It'll be kind of a base camp. And from here, I think I can just farm a Lithanar for more and more blood. He's a pretty strong faction, and though I've taken some of his territory, I don't think that I've totally crippled his capabilities, you know, I mean, to fight. You are surrounded so by three of his cities. Let him build an army, and then I'll destroy it, and then he'll come back, and I'll destroy it again. And hopefully we'll achieve enough Ruination to unlock the Ruination level 3. So we'll need to get about 30. I'm gonna try to bait Elithanar into fighting us, just because I, I really don't respect his army. I, I think I can take two armies at the same time. He decides to go for it. Oh, this isn't good. Complete My mystery. Army failed to spot an enemy ambush. They have launched a surprise attack, surely giving them the upper hand. Surely. <laughs> Look at what a little fucking cuck Alithanar is. He won't even make eye contact with, with the bull. <laughs> He's just staring at the ground all defeated. Okay, we're gonna mess you up, man. You shouldn't have ambushed us like this. So there I was, walking through the field with all of my homies. When suddenly, out of nowhere, we were attacked by wild savages, tree people, shooting shooting pieces of wood at us, and also a bunch of cavalry that were deployed on the other side of a lake. Wild savages. <laughs> As were the beastmen. This is great. I wonder if there's like a, if that was like a cinematic mode for that particular shot of them marching straight down the valley, or it could also potentially just be you know, the editing. You could very easily just add uh, the black bars as well as the uh, filter over it. Anyway, I'm gonna go kill these guys now. Okay, all in all, things are going pretty good. This is where they mostly spawned in and attacked us from. Um, we can see how that's going for them right now. They yeah. did kind of flank us with some cavalry from across the lake, which at first I thought was just a hilarious misplay. But then I kind of forgot they existed, and, and so it kind of worked. But we're, oh, we're reorienting no. ourselves, and uh, this should be... Yeah, we'll, we'll have this taken care of in no time. Also, we can see here, Elithanar himself is just really, really no it's not match doing for, too good. for Torox. He's, yeah. Yeah, he's getting a train ran on him. This is nice, though. That's experience for us. Ooh, let's see how our new oh, giant God. does. Ooh. Oh, you'll fit right in. Yeah, you're great. Oh, okay, after God. a little bit more slamming and smashing Each and ripping swing. and tearing, the uh, High Elves are in full retreat. Oh shit, I think my guy died. Okay, so after fighting that battle, we've been awarded eight points towards our next ritual. So if we can just keep doing this over and over again, we can rack up a lot of points. A little ironic now, the cows are farming you. Okay, I was trying to give Alithanar some time to rebuild his army so I could attack him again, but uh, you know what? The rage meter, it's just not its not working out. So I'm going to go to Karakar yeah. Kar and uh, take the you fight You kind of need him. to continue battle. is that possible? <laughs> I'm going to lose these two, and then I give one of them a buff. And then I'm gonna lose and then you three? lose three? Oh, what's that? You're gonna what? kill my units that I got for free? Oh no! How will I ever recover? Okay, okay, the ritual's getting more powerful. We are at a devastation of 14. What did we need? Like That's 20 nice. plus? We're aiming for about 30. Oh! Oh yes. 30. I'm just looking gotcha. through my hero recruitment. Lakshi, we're gonna have to work on the name. He has unsated bloodthirst. Minotaurs what gain 10% weapon strength. Weapon strength. For minotaurs? All minotaurs? Oh hell in yeah. The army. That's huge. I don't even care. You don't even have to be able to cast any spells whatsoever. Just sit in the corner of the map and provide me that buff. This is going to work out great. going to be a terrific team. And now Alithanar looks like he's going to attack us again. Okay, we, we failed to spot his ambush. Another ambush something again. Something tells me it's not going to make a difference. We're going to slam them. We're going to smash them. It's going to be R-rated. 
And this time I remembered about their little fancy maneuver where they had the cavalry attack me from over the river. So I, I kind of set up. This the same map there. again, too. I'll bring the chaos uh, giant as well. Everyone can get some. Oh, where, oh, where is my pretty little Alithanar? There he is. Torox He's is going to go introduce himself. Oh, no. <laughs> Alith Those guys weren't even attacking Alithanar. He just got pushed <laughs> over by a bunch of He just ran that were fast to combat. Him, yeah. This guy is really, he just doesn't have a battlefield presence. Okay, oh. fantastic. Another W for the Beastmen. Okay, Alithanar, his army is in ruins. Technically, he survived, I think. Somehow. This guy just cannot stop leading hundreds of thousands of people to their immediate demise and then somehow <gasps> surviving with like 10 health. No! <laughs> Someone needs to fire this guy. After that battle, we got up to 26 ruins. I forget what the lore is with Alithanar. Like, why is he all the way over here? Because uh, he's kind of like a separate thing for the High Elves. He doesn't start on uh, Althuan. He's all the way over here, and he also has a different insignia or emblem. Uh, well, it's, English is not my first language, so apologies if I'm not referring to these things correctly. But he seems more like the, the hunter or roamer, or what, that's what I would guess from his little emblem there. Nation, 26 devastation rather, quite nice. If I can finish off Alithanar's army and maybe this other army there. You should get around to 30. Uh, Ladriel, we'll, we'll be in a very good position. Ooh, that's not oh. really great. The Sword of Cain has been claimed and it's been claimed by Alariel the Radiant. She's, uh, she's gonna be one of our enemies not too long from now. Oh, that's a shame. The enemy failed to spot your ambush. Attack now in the Ooh, no reverse card. hand. Well, I think I'm gonna have to show him how a, how a proper ambush is conducted. I think it's only fair. Yeah. <laughs> and it's pretty hard to lose a siege when that's Ooh. happening. His knights are being chased around the battlefield by Torox. And, uh, wow, okay, this is, yeah, this is going fabulous. They, I wouldn't change a thing yeah. about this ambush. Alithanar himself is having, like, a mental breakdown. He's not even shooting. <laughs> He's, He's just, just standing there. He doesn't there. know what to do. <laughs> He's just running around in random directions, oh, jumping, no. spamming every button on his keyboard. He knows it's <laughs> over. It's so over. And then he's dead. That's how you do an ambush, you little twerps. Better luck next time. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, some random what? king kings have decided to declare war Wait, on me. Isn't that the guy with the friggin' bones that spin around him? He kind of looks like he's on a DJ stand, which is pretty funny. Because they have a minus 40 aversion to me just racially they really don't appreciate me normally this would be something you'd be concerned about but like i don't own anything like there's nothing that you can do to me that is gonna bother me in any way so you know go nuts man this is yeah. one of my settlements okay if you think you can make it worse like be my guest all right Uthanar has basically rolled over and died at this point um i, I don't blame him it's, you know, I probably would do yeah. the same thing. He has one uh, yeah. one settlement left, the Blacklight Tower, and a decomposing army. So I'm going to go over there, finish him off, and then we'll just kind of take a look at what our next move is going to be. Oh, yes, and um, we're going to do this ritual for 36. It's pretty nice. So the ritual oh, yeah. of ruin has been performed. We got 36, and that, okay, that puts us at ruination level 3. So looking at this menu, we're going to have access to giants. We already have those. Chaos spawn, uh, beastagore herds with great weapons, gouge horns, beastagore herds. Yeah, it's th the usual stuff. What's really, it's going to be exciting once we can get access to these guys and these guys. So we just got to gotcha. keep pushing our tech forward a little bit at a time. Final attack on the Blacklight Tower. I'm going to assume that they might have, like, specific use cases for those particular units but uh they're just not worth investing into as you probably have like a, a super great army already at this point and so you could just wait for like the high tier ones here let's see how this goes over pyrrhic victory medium casualties easy there's no greater pleasure in this entire world i'm confident in saying this than being able to auto resolve a siege battle and there we have it okay at this point you. in the game most of our immediate threats have been taken care of for me, at the moment, siege battles are kind of fascinating, but I'm sure if you played like 500, 600 hours of this game, then uh, yeah, yeah, you'd probably just really want to auto-resolve it. We are still contending with a lot of people that don't like us and some Tomb Kings that 
want to kill us, but they probably Where are don't they? know how. So I think it might be reasonable to open up the Rewards of Dread, go over to Lords, and we're going to recruit a second Lord. Now, these are these are legendary Lords, so you know you probably want to start with them before you get into the unnamed randoms. I'm going to take Morgur mm. the Shadow Grave. Now, unfortunately, what that does is it actually confederates me with them, and uh, his Bestial Rage is really, really low. I've never been so bad it's at the game that I've run into this issue, so I'm going to try and I'm going to try to solve it on the fly. I have no intention of playing in this region. So instead, I'm just going to abandon his entire army and uh, disband him and then recruit him. I'll re-recruit him up in this region. Okay, so from all the I way see. across the world... <laughs> what? What? From thousands of kilometers away, a man I've never met has come to me and he says, I have traveled far. The least <laughs> you can do is listen. And then what he's asking, he's, he's demanding that I pay him money. <laughs> It's like someone from Romania traveling all the way to my house. And then they're like, listen, you have to hear me out. And then they just threaten me. I mean, that sounds in character. But I'm gonna... Oh, it will result in war. Oh, whatever will I do? Oh, boy. The highly secluded wood elves that never leave their creepy little forest are gonna... <laughs> gonna be at war with me. <laughs> that is a, a funny thing with Warhammer. Because, like, it makes sense for them to demand money from you. Since they have, like, a much stronger army there. We were like, what, rank 100? They were like rank 40 or 50 there. I forget the exact number, but uh, yeah. Yeah, like it means nothing to us since they're just so far away. I'm, I'm quivering. Okay, the Tomb Kings that declared war on us earlier are... They're expanding. They're actually becoming a somewhat oh. formidable faction. They're strength rank That's 15. I think good. they're... For yeah, them? they're one of the strongest ones I've met so far. I mean, I'm still not yeah. worried about them, but I'll, I'll definitely take the opportunity to kill them. But before I do that, I'm looking at my army. It's in a pretty good position. You know, I've got some decent units. I think I'm ready to finally fight that quest battle that was issued to me like 40 oh, turns let's ago. See this. So this is win the following battle with Torox the Brass Bull's army. And if we do this, we get a nominal amount of money, some casualty replenishment, the rune tortured axe. That's what I'm really after. And a lot of dread. So we'll go do Unique this. weapon for Torox. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? They say you have to fight one army. They say it's just going to be Eugene Dreadtongue. But then he brings his friends, Forkus, Piss Taker, and Movar Spiteheart. However, I think, yeah, we have we have Sporkticus. Oh. So this is going to be this is going to be a big, messy, disgusting battle. It should be interesting. Oh, they've got some Harganeth executioners. These guys are quite nasty. Whoever goes up against they them is going to be nasty. beheaded. So I'm gonna probably just ungores maybe that I don't care about. Okay, the lines are crashing against each other. We're more than a match for them, especially once you take into account my Minotaurs that are gonna be working on the right flank. They really don't have much to offer us in terms of resistance. Now, unfortunately, our last spellcaster was killed in a tragic motorcycle accident, but we've got <laughs> a new guy and he can do this. So you could say it's all Ooh. working out all right in the grand scheme of things, really. It is very good, have yeah. folded our left flank because they have those executioners there. It's kind of kind of predictable, but the important people are alive. More Death Knight revelers have joined the battle. Okay, yeah. So I see oh that what, yeah. what's happening here is that everyone loves a good scrap. And the more people we kill, the more people are going to show up. So there's some people flanking us on the left side now. <laughs> that never, that truly never gets old. This is the gouge horns approaching these archers. I never got to see these guys in combat before. Yeah. Oh, there's a, you know what? They have, the, they have okay. the heart of a bull, just not the body. I respect that. Yeah. The green skins have j come to join us in this night of slaughter. The orcs are flooding across the field, and I, I really don't see anything working out for our enemies here. I mean, my entire army has been devastated, but like I said, everyone... I'm assuming that this light blue color is to signify that it's an AI-controlled army that is an ally. Uh, I suppose that if you give some of your units for, like, your co-op partner, if you're playing co-op, um, they would also appear in that color. I wonder if you could, like, assist the AI or have the AI, like, direct them to do a particular thing, or if it's just, uh, you let them do their own thing. Kind of like a green units in Fire Emblem. Hopefully not as bad as them, though. One. Everyone important is okay. Torox, Torox doesn't even have a scratch on him. He's just running around slamming his head through people. There's Not a even Hydra there, though. He's just impaling them with his, his bare head, which is like a real power move. And then some Norskins have also been drawn by the promise of great battle. Okay, yeah, this is just a just a fiesta Mosh in every sense yeah, of the word. At this point. Okay, I'm going to have to lean on the orcs a little bit to carry me through this section of the battle because my just I don't have it enough units. Yeah, just like my heroes the orcs and take stuff, some of the they'll be fine. Hits. But everyone else is 
Like my the giant's, giant's probably going toe-to-toe -to -toe with die. his giant. And it's not going so well for me. But it's okay. It looks like my orc friends are picking up the picking up the slack. Yeah, this is nice. This works. All right. Nice. After what can only be described as a sexually inappropriate amount of violence, we finally won. A hollow victory. You know, Maybe we should just call it a loss. Well, I don't think so because I now have access to this really, really powerful axe. As if I, you know, as if I was having any trouble chopping people up into bite-sized pieces before. It's gonna be really easy now. All right, so to recap things so far, we are a psychotic barnyard animal that has strangled the life out of everyone that has ever come near us. This has given us a firm foothold in the region and allowed us to unlock several new and powerful units, Ooh. as well as a legendary lord, Morgur Shadowgave. With this, I had Torox go north and start farming resources from the Dark Elves, and the only other faction standing in our way was the Tomb Kings, who I had largely forgotten even existed until they showed up at my settlement and started kicking the shit out of me. Okay. Oh no. Tomb Kings are back. They're pretty pissed. But their army is of a fairly low caliber. Perhaps the lowest caliber army to have ever drawn breath on the face of this earth. In other words, I think I can kill them. We don't really have defensive we'll structures per se, but they have to attack us here in order to capture the control. Oh no, we do. We do get a tower. Okay. Yeah, this, this works. So... I think I'm going to just try to hold them along this line, let them come through the choke point, and then then I'll try to go for a wrap around. So let's see what we can do here. Put the people I don't care about. Yeah, they'll be like the first people to be shot to death. They're more than likely going to think that we're insane for leaving our flanks exposed, so they'll send these units in to attack us from behind, not realizing that behind them is a razor Ooh. order that is going to eviscerate them and eat their entrails. Tricky. So that's the game plan. Tomb Kings, start the battle by advancing through the choke point, towards us. It's this AI manipulation that I still have yet to learn, but I can understand that, especially at higher levels of play, this is uh, pretty necessary, because uh, from my own experience, it, it is extremely necessary to learn how the AI would behave if you're trying to like complete a, a higher level XCOM 2 campaign. But once you start playing against a human opponent, I wonder how crazy these kind of strategies would get. Because I'm sure that uh, an experienced player would see an open flank, but they would also know that it's probably a trap. But then you could also mind game them that it's actually an open flank and we have all of our units just waiting to, to burst through this other flank instead. A lot of different ways each battle could go, and uh, I'm sure each battle is uh, completely unique, which is likely the appeal of Total War and why so many people can sink like thousands of hours into this game and still see something new and learn something new every day. Where we will be ready to receive them. Quite a lot of Tomb Kings. Maybe maybe even a concerning amount of them. Oh dear. He appears oh, to have actually identified spotted you. my Razor Gore herds in the woods because he's shooting Rip. them with artillery. I guess the jig is up. That's all right. These things are he pretty might as nasty. Well charge. Okay, the lines are just clashing now. Nothing too exciting, just a little preliminary cavalry charge, I guess. I'm able to goon up on his uh, casket of souls, which is quite nice. It's good to get this disabled early on in the fight. There's a few more units on this flank than I had anticipated, but I think we'll be all right. All right, this side, where it's time to spring the trap. I mean, it's not much of a trap, it's pretty obvious what I was planning to do, but our opponents walked right into it. They're clumping up really hard here, and now we're gonna try to get a wrap around. Mm. That'll be a lot cooler if it wasn't so dark. Can't hardly see anything. He's got a couple True. of units that are, you know, strong enough to just plow I mean, through my cool. own gores. But I think on the whole, we're taking an advantageous position. Oh god, no, there's way more reinforcements. This is way worse than I thought. I can't cope. Yeah, he's got the scorpions out now. Ooh. It's not good when the scorpions yeah. come out. Morgur is working overtime to try to pick up the pieces here, but this is just really not looking great. Okay, so... We might have lost this one. The issue is they had the, all these archers and uh, it was hard to get around behind them because they were fighting by this big rock and I really wasn't anticipating so many reinforcements. So we're probably going to lose this herdstone. Wow, they, they, they managed to defeat us and you know what? They didn't even deploy as many units as us. We had about uh, 3,500. They had 27. Damn, we, uh, 
misplayed. We got trounced. Okay, so that was a stressful and unexpected setback. With Mortar dead and our herdstone destroyed, our enemies could start colonizing this region, which would set us back like 30 turns. I tried to bribe them with all the money I had gained from lobotomizing Dark Elves, but they weren't having it. So I put Torox in overdrive and had him begin a rampage through the Tomb King's territory. He was becoming so powerful <laughs> by this point that I was just using him to solo hey, entire enemy Uno garrisons. Card. Obviously, Whoa, the bony freaks didn't appreciate this, them. and it all came to a head at this final battle. Oh, this is what I've been hoping for. The Tomb Kings, two on one against Torox. All of my army is half dead. I like these odds. Now, this is a battle in a beast, uh, beast way because I was in that stance when they attacked me. Oh. Since it's in a beast way, I seem to be able to deploy like 90% of my army in a vanguard what? position, which means I'll be like right on top of the enemy's main army. I'll be able to close this gap in about 20 seconds. So we're just going to be rushing them. Okay, this is still fairly substantial enemy resistance. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. say that this is nothing. Certainly not nothing. But I think rushing is our best chance here because we need to try to hit them before they get the reinforcements. The reinforcements are only going to make this harder. The Minotaurs, sure. are, I mean, they're getting pieced up a little bit just on account of them being largely alone, but they're they're holding their own, which is good. Enemy reinforcements will be here soon, unfortunate. I'm gonna try to take out the Tomb King leader using Torox. Yep. Gaps in their line allow me to get into their archers. I've managed to get some some monsters in their back line, which is helping. Oh, but what if I just use the purple sun? I've never oh, seen like, such a is. good use case for this oh, in my entire life. Oh yeah, that's that's gangbusters. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm not gonna say this is a flawless performance, but I think we're going to be able to win this. Just based on like terror tactics and my enemy not being that good. Okay, we managed to kill some of their leadership. I think there's only one commander remaining. If we get him, the entire army is definitely going to crumble. The biggest mistake that the Tomb Kings... Yeah, they're they're falling apart. Now, the, the mistake that they made was not stopping me. Like, if this gets in your back line, you've made a grave strategic miscalculation. Granted, I don't know how I would exactly stop that from... You know, he seems like the kind of thing that um, would be hard to do. Seems like the kind of monster that kind of goes where he wants. But uh, yeah, you got to try to stop that try to stop that i feel like once the battle ended up in this particular field the match was pretty much set like how would you even deploy your army or like maneuver them in time to get away from the beastmen and i'm also assuming that obviously well the beastmen have a much higher mass than your bony skeleton boys so they would just break through any front line that you have even if you like encircled your own archers within the very center of your formation yeah not much you can do Beautiful. That's a nice win. All right, so let's do a quick overview here. It's turn 73. We don't have a lot to show for it, uh, but maybe that's the mark of a great beast man player. We've castrated the Tomb Kings, so we have their scrotum. You know, they went from strength rank like 20 to 79, and the Dark Elves to our north, they're not so strong either. I mean, they, what are they at? 37? Forget about it. Uh. What I'm going to start doing now is posturing for a move into Ulthwan. I think this is going to involve an invasion of the Wood Elves because they hate us and it's, you know, it's going to happen eventually. So I yeah. may as well kind of kick things off on kind an of advantageous to secure flank. Once we have the Wood Elves subjugated, we're going to work our way down these glades until we're somewhere around here, hop over here, and just start our colonization of Ulthwan. I've got all of the it's gonna be late a while, game though. units that I think I'll need access to. I think we can do this now. So we're going to regroup a little bit here. We have, a, certainly we have a lot of armies and we're capable of doing some terrible things. Oh, Alariel. Hmm. Oh okay. no. Alariel has Doesn't she have the smart cane? She's, but she's aloof, safe and secure, away from the rest of the world. This leader is mostly unmoved by the fate of others. But apparently she's incensed to violence by the existence of beastmen. Um, okay, this is a little ahead of schedule, but I think we'll be okay. That's just one high elf faction. Who cares? So far, we haven't had any contact with Alariel the Radiant. She's just kind of staring at us angrily from across the water, and that's <laughs> that's fine. Because we'll be over there probably in the next 10 turns to, uh, you know, deal with that. Okay, so things are going pretty well for us at this point. I mean, the Dark Elves are technically alive, like they have a pulse. It would be illegal to kill them, but just barely. The only issue is that we have the Wood Elves penetrating us from two positions, just got like that a double-pronged dildo to kill them. that also hates oh us. Oh my god. Minus two. <laughs> 
241 <laughs> relation with them. So you could say it's a complicated relationship. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't could. suspect that it's going to resolve peacefully. Otherwise, we're just going to spend the next few turns cleaning things up and we should be good. Barb knuckle boxing? <laughs> this is sweet. What? I love this faction. Like, yeah, I just realized looks, my guy literally doesn't have a cool. weapon. He just has chains wrapped around his fists and he's going around punching people to death. <laughs> Hell yeah. I couldn't write a better faction, honestly. This really is like the best faction for just fucking with people. Like, I'm destroying all your stuff and I've also destroyed all my stuff already so you can't even like retaliate. Just see. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah. It's about time you The sisters of Twilight. Bitch. The sisters of Twilight have declared war on us. So this, this is about to get interesting. As far as I know, this is going to be a nightmare matchup for me because the Sisters of Twilight, they're wood elves, okay? So like the, the degeneracy is on a whole nother level. In order of degeneracy, the, I would say the, the dark elves are the least degenerate because they're at least open and honest about mm. being sex-addled freaks. And then That's the high how you elves are somewhere in the middle for their degeneracy. Something about them just creeps me out. But definitely the top of the list for, you know, complete absence of morality is the Wood Elves. They specialize in this kind of guerrilla warfare, hit and run tactics, and they use a lot of archers. You don't have to be a very good archer to hit a Gorgon, for example. Yeah. We're gonna be absorbing a lot of fire. But luckily, they're some kind of pacifists because they seem to be incredibly under leveled the sisters of twilight their army's oh, right no. here they're level 15 they haven't been doing a whole lot clearly because torox is level 38 and oh i'm going to go God. absolutely annihilate them they they just... bruh yeah i mean if torox ever reaches them then uh they are gone but i think the well when do they get their flying mount they would probably be on that i mean at some point they would have to land maybe i don't really know the mechanics of that because Torox is uh, not going to get a flying mount anytime soon, I'm sure. They tried to ambush the plane of spiders. That's You've played yourself, I'm afraid. Okay, they're trying to run away. I hate to break it to you, but running exactly 12 feet is not going to dissuade me from pulling <laughs> off your head. Yeah, this is just a decisive <gasps> oh, victory. Oh, you know what, no. guys? In the interest of time, I would them. usually just auto-resolve this. But it's important in life to appreciate the little things. Sometimes you have to pet a cat on the side of the road. Sometimes you have to smell a rose. Yeah. And sometimes you have to crush your enemies with your bare hands. You have True. to enjoy it, all right? These are the things that keep us alive. So I'm going to enjoy this. God, this is half of my army right here. It's just this. <laughs> just the big boys. Such easy uh, management. I kind of love it. All right, very good. Here we go. Straight down the pipe. You know, there is that aspect to this, right? Because uh, we have a lot of single units. Uh, I, I guess you would just call them like a large unit. So it, it doesn't really clump up as much. So there's a little bit less management there. And they're not like chariot or cab units that you have to micromanage a lot. The more I see of this campaign, the more fun it sounds, you know? And I mean, Reggie here is having such a great time playing them. Uh, I'm kind of inclined to start playing them at some point. I don't have the DLC for them, unfortunately, but you know, maybe someday. And I'm sure like at this point, somebody probably made a mod or something to add in uh, other types of beastmen. Because I know that there's like a ton of them, but uh, not all of them are, or not even the majority of them are even represented in Warhammer 3. So maybe it's uh, something like that Clan Molders mod that uh, is out there on the workshop for the Beastmen. The rocks are landing. Miss. Pretty good. Minotaur advancing through the woods. They're still undetected right now. They're, they get pretty close before being detected. Our enemy does have some flying units which are like kind of bothersome just because I've, i i have no um ranged units whatsoever i've just kind of given up on that maybe we can throw some mm. boulders at them i guess that might technically work yeah our enemies are not having a great time Ooh. <laughs> yeah that was pretty good <laughs> that's so good eventually once once we kill all of the ground units they will be forced to land and they're not going to like what's waiting for them okay i nope, see they've decided not to land they just gave up they flew away with just running health. away. You know what? Something tells me um, this isn't going to be as hard as I thought it was. We lost two models. They only have one kill. What? So 50% of our casualties were friendly fire. That's pretty nice. Oh, oh I'm no. I'm impressed with myself. And I think we can have this wrapped up. I mean, there's what? Like seven settlements? Not too bad, actually. This is a walk in If park. only he and knew. We can, we can focus dude. all of our attention on the wood elves. 
Venom Glade, easily captured. Medium casualties, okay. Torox is going to plow through to the Temple of Ada Ioth, which I struggled to pronounce even after three attempts. And what we're going to do is turn this into a herdstone, and then that'll give us, I think, a blood grounds over pretty much all of the Wood Elf territory. Oh, this is in an existing blood ground, so I can't make it here. Okay, so I'll have to make one at Vol's Anvil, I think. Oh no! The end game crisis! The wild hunt! The wild hunt. Now, fortunately, I don't think I turned the difficulty setting up too high, because there's only two armies. They're pretty good armies, but I think we can take them. Okay, the Wood Elves are taking both of their armies to Hag Hall, and from there, I think they're going to try to attack me at Vol's Anvil. Now, Malagor is... He's definitely not ready for that, which is unfortunate, but I think Torox, Torox can, can like maybe make one it at this point, so not a big deal. Yeah, I'm just gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put my balls on the table. Torox is right next to a big garrison, the Sisters of Twilight, both of these armies, and uh, right let's in see between if they take them. the bait. Oh, they're taking the bait. I've oh, distracted let's them see from this. Balls Anvil by getting them to attack three on one Torox. Let's try it. This is supposed to be a decisive defeat. I think there's a good chance everyone's going to die, but Torox is like, he's such an animal. He's such a laser brained cum slut sex pot. What? <laughs> I already used that joke. <laughs> let's, let's see what happens. Oh no, we're in. Bruh. Reggie's wild. <laughs> like, we say some wild stuff doing our streams here on this channel, but, uh, uh, nothing to this level. At least, I would hope not. And, um, we're in the beast path, because I was in the, the, um, the beast path stance. So it's going to be a nice, tight, narrow area for us to fight. It's not clear if that's going to be to my advantage yet. I mean, it will simplify things, but it'll also probably help them bottleneck us. Two yeah. enemy reinforcements are coming From in right next behind. to me. So I'm thinking I just wait for these armies to arrive. I'll literally just sit here and wait for them. Really? Oh, the Psycho has an ability? What does this one do? Warp gaze. Oh, that's terrible. He can petrify his enemies so they can't move. So imagine you've got this thing like 20 feet from you, then suddenly you're unable to move, but you're able to watch him slowly pick up a gigantic <laughs> fucking 3,000 pound boulder, put it on his oh, shoulder no. and launch it at you. And you just have to stand there and take it. They're going to come in they're going to have a very bad time because they're all ranged units. The main enemy army appears to be taking an aggressive posture against us. I think they know what I'm trying to do. So they're trying to get to me and stop me from killing all of their reinforcements. But if they want to do that, they're going to have to eat eat a few boulders on entry. Good luck with that, fellas. I think yeah. the Wood Elves are giving up. Uh, yeah, I think they're taking a defensive stance. They've realized they're not going to make it in time to save their reinforcements. So they're just going to wait for these ones over here 15 seconds. So now that they have these reinforcements, it's going to be a lot easier for me to hit them with boulders because there's so many more Wood Elves. Okay, here we go. They're coming onto the map. I've got this area pretty congested with Minotaurs. They're high mass entities. So like very difficult to kind of push Yeah, they won't be able to them. break through. So all yeah. of the enemies coming in at this gnarled, old, corrupted pus oozing tree yeah they're they're being killed i think the sisters of twilight themselves are dead currently everything else is charging across the field in a pretty unorganized kind of pattern still more reinforcements coming through here so i gotta keep most of my guys there but i'm gonna start pulling off some minotaurs because we're gonna have to receive all these enemy reinforcements this is what i was worried about just so many enemy archers it's just an absolute fiesta over here i'm um, torox is in on it he's going insane Oh, yes. Yes, we're getting the Purple Sun of Xerus right in oh, there. Oh, it's, it's so oh. good. Just gonna keep spamming the Purple Sun on these guys. We've got some good matchups too, though. Like, their Tree Man is being... Okay. Supposed to be getting messed up <laughs> by our Gorgon. Oh, God. oh no! Torox is like, he not fell a scratch over. Oh, on God. him, so this is good. More enemy reinforcements are arriving from this position. That's not great. I thought we had seen the last of them. Okay, everyone's starting to crumble a little bit here. This isn't great. So Still, many I'm, deaths. I'm, I'm, I'm putting a lot of faith in Torox because he, he's, he hasn't taken like any damage yet. I can't even fucking tell what's going on here. I'm trying to determine if it's worth nuking this place, but it's just... I... <laughs> <laughs> I think my computer would die at around this point. Like, what is even going on? All I see is a bunch of colored pixels. <laughs> I think there's like a bunch of uh, beastmen, and then there's like some tree guys, and then there's some footsel- Are they even alive or dead in there? I don't know. <laughs> it's just an absolute mess.
Just everyone's covered in blood. Everyone's covered in everyone else's entrails. <laughs> it's such a mess. The yeah. Wood Elves are. The, look how tenacious they are. They're they're being slaughtered down to the last man. Like every single unit here has a, an absolute sliver of health left, and they're steady. They're a little tired. Like they're not breaking. Okay, oh, Torox steady. is managing to assassinate some of their leaders. Very good. It's just it's just Torox and the heroes now. The heroes are gone. It's just Torox. Torox oh, is the only no. thing left on the field, but he's an unbre- He's wavering. No! <laughs> I was just about to say, he's unbreakable. He's Torox never gives up. He fucked that one up a little bit. I mean, we got a lot of kills. I mean, yeah. Got hundreds of kills on most of our units. I'm not sure which army I'd rather have been in. They both got pretty messed up, but I think we can actually probably push the fight on the next battle and win. Oh, they're coming after us again. You people are out of your mind! Again? Torox That's is an going to turn himself into a victory. cannonball and plow right through you. No, this isn't This isn't going to be a Pyrrhic victory. This is going to be me sending Torox in by himself and soloing your army. Torox is going Yo. to mangle these poor people. Everyone else just kind of hides over here, I think. Yeah. Okay, Sisters of Twilight are dead. Torox is just getting mobbed by hawk riders. I mean, that works out for Torox. You're just walking at them. He hits them once, and he's like, really? Do you guys you guys really want to do this? And they're like, no. No, we don't. <laughs> Ooh. Damn, Ooh. shame if someone killed you. Yeah, victory. Sweet. <laughs> okay, so what's the back shot off of all of this? Well, Torox kind of sacrificed himself by throwing himself headfirst into a wood elf uh, death trap. And his army is in shambles. But the nice thing is that the wood elf armies are also in shambles. I mean, most of them are like five to seven units, half of them. I mean, could the wood elves winning that battle even be called a victory if they suffered so many casualties and can't even recover from it? I think not. I still think that uh, at the end of the day, Torox kind of came out victorious there. Are dead. So Torox is going to pull out, take a little vacation. He's earned it. Yeah. And we're going to yeah. swap out for Malagor the Dark Omen and um, more hey, the Shadow fresh armies. They're going to start taking a more active stance in this theater of war. Oh, wow. We got our ass kicked so badly that the buildings are damaged. What the fuck? I didn't even realize Dang. that was possible. <laughs> What elves are trying to rebuild their armies, but they're, they're contending with so much. They're contending with a lot of oh, they also plague, are plague damage. Too. It's kind of slowing them down. And Morgur yeah. is pushing on the Witchwood here. He's got a... I mean, it's a stupid army, but it's full health, which is more I mean, than what elves can say. So let's see how they handle this pressure. Oh, I think he's going to go for it. He's going to try to fight Morgur the Shadow Gave. This will be really? interesting. Morgur is not nearly as tough as Torox, but I think I can still mess them up a little bit. Alternatively, I run away. Maybe I run away. Looking at this army right now, and I'm like, ah, oh, yes. The army full of random things. That's always a dangerous one. <laughs> I'll run away. This one's a lot better. Yeah, I'll take this auto-resolve. Okay, so that was a Pyrrhic victory auto-resolve at the uh, Ice Gorge. Okay, yeah, see now his, his armies are split up a little bit, I think. There's gotta be someone in an ambush stance. Almost definitely. Oh no, my army failed to spot an enemy ambush. I think we can take these guys. Without their reinforcements, I think we can take them. Okay, our enemies took a really weird approach here. They put half their guys over here, half them over here. We're just gonna go over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, his idea of splitting okay. his army up, it's not going so well for him because he lacked any front line whatsoever. So my chaos spawn are sprinting through the woods and pulling apart his archers. You know your enemy messed up pretty badly when you have units that are in sleep mode. E either you're messing up or your enemy is. That's one of two options. Fantastic. Mm, yeah, if they're in sleep mode when you got ambushed. I guess it kind of depends on the situation. Um, having a split army on both sides during an ambush kind of seems like the tactic. But then when you're fighting against the beastmen who would just charge one particular flank and would likely just blow past you and all that ammo and just kill you, that half of your army, then, um, yeah, you might want to end up blobbing up your units instead, and, uh, having a, a front line to protect them. I wonder how the Beastmen would do against, like, a, a Skaven ambush, though. Because I, I feel like the Rattling Gunners would just mow them down, but I also don't know, like, the damage numbers there. Because the Beastmen are super tanky, 
and uh, I don't know exactly how much damage a rattling gunner would even do. Fantastic, this battle is just about over. It's really just the Sisters of Twilight left, and they're going to have to hit the ground they soon. They just won't die. I love how these guys shamble. Oh, and then you, you think that, oh, they're just shambling, and then they break into the full sprint, and it's too late. <laughs> Land, yeah. you fucking pussy. Everyone's dead. Everyone's <laughs> gone home. He's just cheating at this point. It literally says, the enemy's in control of the battlefield, you must attack by land. No. I don't think I will. <laughs> you know, I just wait for him to land. There he goes. Okay, there he's it is. He's a pretty is. good melee combatant. I I'm referring to it as a him, but I'm pretty sure it's actually just two women and a dragon. But anyway, it doesn't matter. He's wavering. He's going to give up soon. There it is. <laughs> okay, with that, the wood elves are now completely in disarray. Um, the Sisters of Twilight, their army is neutered. Everyone Gone, else yeah. is pretty much dead. We just need to, Time to swoop complete in. a finishing blow by taking the witch wood, killing off uh, store egg core, and then that, that'll do it for them, I think. There's a chance that these dark elves to the south might decide they want to kill us. That'd be pretty, like, pretty not great. They're the second most powerful faction in the game. Or oh, well. You know what? I, you can't worry about these things. You're just a giant bull man. Just go around and kill people. <laughs> Don't make it more complicated than it's... <laughs> Uh, no thoughts, head empty, just murder. You know, uh, I, I feel like Reggie's really getting to the spirit of things. <laughs> A respectable choice, to be sure. It has to be. Torox is going to now finish off the Witchwood. Not even an issue. On the other side yeah. of the map, the Wood Elves are probably going nuts and killing a bunch of people. And technically, I'm at war with them. But I, you Looks know, like that really just doesn't bother me. I'm, I'm way over here. It's not my problem. I'm seeing some pretty interesting... Wait a minute. Oh, they're on that side of the map. And then earlier on in the video, we saw a bunch of ships just sailing across the ocean to uh, Alth-1 to mess up Reggie's day. And uh, I think those were Wood Elf armies. Hmm. I see where this is going. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what happens later, but we'll see. Seeing upgrade options here... Um for our infrastructure, we can build things like the Mound of Blades and the Pile of Flesh. <laughs> is that just, hmm. is that what my construction is? It's just piles of different <laughs> objects? Mound yeah, of Blades, basically. Pile of Flesh, heads on spikes. Okay, that's like at least a little more architecturally involved. But they give us cool uh, army <laughs> abilities, such as Vile Entropy, drains something's ammunition, reduces its range 50%, touched by the moon, huge buff, 40% physical resistance, 50% yeah. damage pretty much across the board. Oh, Unbreakable too. Deals severe damage oh. upon expiry. I see. Oh. So phase one gives you all these really cool buffs, and phase two deals 37,000 damage per second <laughs> for 45 seconds. Gonna have to be careful about using that one, but I'll take yeah. it. That sounds pretty nice. I'm gonna take a hero and, and try to put him in Althwan and just see what's going on over there, okay? Bruh. The <laughs> that sounded way too good to, to be a, a thing, but uh, yeah, you gotta read the fine print there. I suppose that particular one you might want to use if you, like, need to send in a, a, a expendable squad and have them do some serious damage before they go, rather than using it on, um, you know, one of your high-tier expensive units that are already pretty good on their own already. This is their last settlement. Wood Elves, now officially homeless. I mean, I don't think that that's going to affect them very much. They seem like the type of people that would be okay with living on the street and ingesting bath salts as their primary method of nourishing their body. All right, so to recap, our antisocial personality disorder has manifested in us killing all of our neighbors, leaving only vast swaths of rubble in every direction. Now, it's time to launch our war against the most sexually ambiguous man on the planet. Tyrion. Look, I don't have an issue with homosexuals. In fact, they constitute 90% of my Discord server. However, it's the ambiguity that I just can't stand. Because oh, if I don't God. know what your intentions are with my penis, then you're simply too dangerous to be left alive. So we're going Jesus. to go over to Althwan, perform a demographical restructuring, and call it a day. But first, an overview of our military. Malagor has a unique army composition that I like to call random bullshit. Morgur has cavalry <laughs> and anti-infantry chaos spawn. Torox is fielding a variety of monsters and minotaurs. And finally, Kazrak is bringing in the siege weapons along with thousands of level 1 spearmen. With that, we hopped on a series of mobilized garbage platforms what? and set sail with the next 20 turns looking something like this. We landed on Ulthwan's beaches. You know, 
that's actually kind of fun. I thought they would just be on ships just like everybody else, but they, they have their own unique thing going on. That just looks like a giant fish. Realized most of the elves were some kind of underleveled pacifist morons, killed a whole oh, bunch no. of them, briefly paused to make fun of Marathi's army. Morathi, what the fuck happened to your army? What is that? Do you want to talk about it? Spread a whole bunch of chaos. <laughs> it's, it's a full 20 stack of trash mobs. <laughs> what are you doing, Morathi? Isn't Morathi like one of the stronger you know, clans too? Like... Yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess the AI is just making uh, interesting decisions sometimes. House corruption just by existing, and then punched through the Phoenix Gate and established our first Herdstone. All right, Herdstone is down. Nice. Now, this is a level four Herdstone, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, one of our slots is taken by a largely useless port. Casualty I'm going to upgrade right? for Winds of Malady. Every one of our enemies in the Blood Grounds is going to become tired. Oh, oh, this is a bummer. This didn't work how I wanted it to work. I was hoping that the Blood Grounds would project outward, but it just mostly seems don't. to be focused on the inner ring. I'm going to need a yeah. series of Blood Grounds, some on the inside, some on the outside. Totally do it. It's workable. It's fine. Torox is going to Gotta go take a little extra Kurtis work here and establish a Blood Grounds there. Upgrade this one as well. We're here now, and I think that the only, like, really, the only true honorable move is to just stand up for what we believe in. I don't just hate Alariel, I hate all elves. So I'm going to declare war on all of the high elves. Starting with you, and uh, finishing with you, because you were allied to all of the other elves. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go with the buddy <laughs> system. Kazrak is gonna stay near Morgur at all times, and they're going okay. to farm the inner ring for as much violence as they can, and uh, Torox is going to hang out up here on the outer ring, and uh, do the same, basically. Kazrak is taking... I think Alariol should still have the Sword of Cain, so if we're able to take her out, then getting the Sword of Cain on Torox would be an unstoppable duo, wouldn't it? I think, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Void fire Tor, close victory with medium... If really, like, really it's a close victory with medium casualties? Really? Just on principle, I'm going to fight this. I mean... This is not the most effective army, but goddamn if it's not enjoyable. <laughs> There's no way that they're even going to gonna reach us. Medium casualties, my ass. Ooh. This is going spectacular. I love the rock-sized hole that we, yeah, that we right? just plow through there. Oh, God. <laughs> and then it takes a few minutes before anyone's willing to fill it. They're like, ah, oh, I don't know. Oh, God. It worked so well last time. Okay, things are coming together pretty good. Evershale is gathering devastation. Was, now, just a reminder, something. like, devastation is... It's important. It basically progresses us as a society. And mm -hmm. right now, we're about middle of the road. We need to get all the way to 500, and that will unlock for us the final battle. What is the final battle? I, I really don't know. I'm curious to find out, and I won't consider this campaign complete until I do. Okay, I'm gonna gotcha. put my balls on the table here. Torox, he's rushing yeah, I have no idea either. Lek. And he's not able to attack it this turn. Oh. My balls have just been placed on the table and they're about to be hit with a sledgehammer. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose my herdstone here, but that's all right. Did you give oh, the Sword no. of Cain to a level 7? Yeah, what? Okay, so what? Why? <laughs> AI, hello? Wasn't it on Alari? I guess she just wanted to remove the debuff or something. I don't know, but like, what in the world? These absolute lobotomites gave the Sword of Cain to a level 7, and it's in the dominating phase. I don't know exactly what that means, but I'm pretty, pretty sure this girl is going insane. I should, really, I should just go kill her and put her out of her misery. Yeah, in this campaign, honestly, the elves, at this point. They're all fairly underleveled. It seems like no one bothered to challenge them very much. This is why bullying is necessary, okay? If someone had have just, bullying you know, necessary. fucked with the elves a little bit, they wouldn't be level 7, level 8, level 19 on like turn 300. Okay, now look, Alariel the Radiant has just attacked me. She has two armies. Technically, I could, I could take a Pyrrhic victory auto-resolve auto with high casualties. Yeah. And that's probably better than what I can do manually here, but I, I don't think that's what we came for. I think we came to see high elf casualties. 
So we're going to really True. see it. For the, the content. Her reinforcements will be arriving in three minutes because we have a couple points in lightning strike. So that increases the uh, time it takes them to arrive here. And with a bit of Vanguard deployment, I think I'll be able to close the distance on her quite quickly. So let's just go for it here. Okay, the cows are charging. He's just offered his reavers to me on a silver oh, platter. So okay. I'm going to accept that. Okay, the cows are charging downhill. I've also got some on the flank. Get rid of your own okay, cavalry. Reinforcements are still Super not early. here for another minute. And, you know, things are just not going so great for him. She's trying, but there's only so much you can do when there's, uh, you know, people hitting you with great axes and stabbing you with spears and draining the life out of you with arcane magic. It puts a pretty big limiter on what you're able to accomplish. Torox is absolutely ruining the Phoenix Guard, which are otherwise, you know, pretty strong units. These reinforcements are going to start arriving now. I'm going to try to kind of beat them to the punch with these. I have three squads of Minotaur that are very fresh, so I'm going to plow them right into the reinforcements because a lot of these things, you know, they're going to be archers, so we can kind of stuff them up mm. against the wall that'll be perfect battles pretty much over here against the lariel's main army okay that's a victory wasn't so bad we just nice. had to um crush a few people's skulls beneath our uh, hooves chase a few innocent men through the woods yeah we got them lord croak is up here that's lord not how croak. you use lord croak my dude <laughs> he's not <laughs> an agent oh god <laughs> Lord Croak doing it? What the hell? Oh no, who sent it? Uh, please don't tell me it was Gorok. But from what Reggie mentioned there, he's not an agent. I'm assuming that there are some heroes that are just better to be as, uh, like a singular unit to either go and scout or like perform other hero actions, I think they're called. And uh, there are just some other heroes that are really good in battle, so you'd want them uh, as a part of your army. Lord Croak is definitely one that you'd want to use in battle because of his spells that are just so incredibly devastating. Even the lower level ones are pretty good. Uh, they're they're all around Evershale as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six armies near Evershale. Three or four armies near Torox. This is this is dangerous. You won't. There's no way you're gonna they attack will. me here. They will. You won't do it. That's He's exactly what they're doing. Thinking of, oh my god, there's four stacks. Okay. There's oh, so geez. many enemies around us right now. It's it's troubling. So, Eltharian has you didn't read their home territory. sieged me. Their leaders are terrible. So I'm hoping I can morale shock them a little bit. But the actual units in the armies are fairly good. Except for these, these brats are going to stay in no chance. They're going to leave as soon as I kill the leader. It's going to be great. Yeah. On our side, we have just a garrison mostly. So I was going to fight this battle, which wouldn't be so bad. It would take time and it would possibly kill my Gorbul. But instead, I'm just going to take an auto resolve uh, lightning strike here. So we're basically isolating this one army away from his reinforcements. We don't get our reinforcements either, but it's just way more favorable to us like this. So we'll snatch up that auto resolve. And this is all going actually quite according to plan like they're coming right to me right into the blood grounds and we're um we're just jumping them oh this is just ridiculous <laughs> all three of them rolled up together and i'm doing? just gonna lightning strike them one at a time now unfortunately this last one i'm gonna actually have to fight because they are i'm assuming the ai might not consider that the enemy lord has lightning strike or well maybe they wouldn't even be able to tell that uh i'm Eh, it's just more likely that they don't even have it in their uh, programming to even consider that as a factor. So they're just kind of like stacking and attacking. Or perhaps uh, the campaign or battle difficulty is set to a lower difficulty. Lots of things could be going on here, but I don't have enough knowledge about the game to even pry this open. Auto resolve is going to kill my hero and I just, I can't. Personally, I can't deal with that right now. Eventually, he's going to give her enough CTE that is going to become lethal. She's going to accumulate so much brain damage. <laughs> it's just slamming her head first into trees. I can't even watch this. Oh, she's dead. So the high oh, elf no. resistance is not proving to be as effective as they were hoping. All right, that takes care of most of Eltharian's stuff. Eltharian himself is actually fairly well leveled. You know, he's level 30. That's not terrible. And he's waiting for me in this um, walled settlement. I'm in no rush to push him. I'm just going to keep developing these herd stones, upgrading them, getting yeah. a stronger and stronger garrison, and Fighting him there would improving be, uh, their effects. Pretty bad. Oh, okay. We got a little lucky here. Zil Nilin has failed to spot the ambush that uh, we were setting up. And that's just not going to... I'm not going to go so well for him because there's 
three armies of beast men that oh he accidentally walked right yeah, into. Yeah, they're just dead. Bro's done. He's cooked. I'm going to try to bait these guys. They don't seem very, like, perceptive to my ambushes. I'm going to hide Torox up here. Maybe they won't notice him. Oh my god, these AI are insane, dude. Your army was spotted by the enemy before it could spring its ambush. You have an opportunity to intercept and engage them in battle. Yeah, I think I will intercept and engage well. them in battle. Okay, yeah. I managed to lure Eltharion out of his little hiding place. He thought the shrine of Kurnos was um, vulnerable, but he's wrong. And that now I'm going to kill him uh, yep. for it. The enemy failed to spot your ambush. Oh man, it's going to be an oh, ambush battle too. No. You're, it's not your day. Eltharion, it's really not your day. I feel like when you're fighting the legendary lord of another faction, you kind of want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. You want to measure your meat against theirs. They seem Certainly. to have put some kind of a Makes prism sense. spell on Torox. He's unable oh, to move. Oh, that? That's not bad. I mean, that's... That's, um... That's the thing where if you put it on them and you defeat them, you put them in your cave, right? <laughs> your man cave. Uh, but I, I guess it also has the added bonus to lock down a legendary lord, which could be super good in a battle, except for the fact that, you know, all the other beastmen units are also really, really good. So they'd probably just plow through your army anyways. Slowing me down a bit. We managed to get around to his archers on this side here, and if it wasn't for the purple sun draining the soul out of them, well, I don't really like their odds otherwise anyway. So the enemy army is in... Various shades of full retreat. They're all There's just really running not away. not much yeah. going well for them at the moment. Eltharion is getting 1v1'd by Torox, and he's just giving up. Sense. And Torox there he is goes. 20 levels they higher. Before the reinforcements even arrived. This was a pretty thorough beatdown of the high elves. The enemy failed to spot my ambush again. Oh, oh man. No. Okay, I just chased them down, ambushed them again. So this that is army's just totally bullying. done. Eltharion. And this is where things are going to turn around. Because of the other elves, the wood elves, like, I'm banking it's definitely going to be the wood elves. Orion's just going to come across the ocean and be like, Hey, you remember that time I asked you for a thousand gold and you didn't give it to me? Well, it's time to pay up. He's going to be, he's going to be in the penalty box for a few turns. And our rampage is, is starting to pick up finally. Let's pick a reward. Kind of like this. Enemy leadership minus eight in Torox's local region. That's Very nice. Good. I literally saw this faction. I was like, oh, they look simple. I won't have to read much, right? Like we've really weakened up the initial wave of resistance here. I think I can start pushing our borders a little further with these, uh, the blood grounds. Now this is a little concerning. However, Torox is ready to claim his birthright. Three high elf armies attacking Torox. Yeah, let me know how that bow works out, guy. Yeah, why not? Why not a decisive victory? The sword calls to you. Oh, wow, that's nice. Son of a bitch. Oh, no, it's Mal- Oh, God. Die, die, give up. Die, 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 die. <laughs> I was supposed to have the High Elves killed like 50 turns ago, and if I don't kill the High Elves within the next 30 turns, I'll probably just kill myself. Fuck this, I'm taking my shirt off. Three <laughs> Lizardmen army. Something oh, Lizardmen army. Me. Possibly a fucking Lord Croak is finally here! Easy win. We're auto-resolving our way through this. Decisive defeat, do you know who I am? Yeah, this is great. This is brutal. <laughs> this isn't even a fight, man. Never come back. I wonder how many hours of footage that we've just gone through. Like, this is a pretty cool montage, and I, I'm really liking the music to it. But, uh, yeah, I can't imagine how much time was spent just going through this campaign. Are we actually going to end on the, the final battle? Will we even reach that? Because uh, on the screen right now, there is, seems to be a bit of a problem going on. Uh. <laughs> oh no, Reggie's going crazy. This is, just, well, this is a second channel video, and I've been like 25 hours of recording. Like, fuck it. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I asked uh, just a bit too soon. 25 hours of recording, my god. And it's sort of like the, the second channel too, which is supposed to be more chill, but like... <laughs> yeah, I guess Reggie's invested. And props to him too. Of course, if you haven't already, check the link at the top of the description. Go over to Reggie's second channel and give him a like and a sub. Yes, man. <laughs> I think it's time to, to get a little help out here.
All right, so I started going a little crazy for a while there, but that's in the mm -hmm. past because I've done some things that I'm not particularly proud of, and the lizards no longer want to kill oh us, and the wood God. elves are decomposing in a series of weighted. I do not want to see the rest of those images. <laughs> I could already tell. <laughs> It's, it's bad news bears. Bags at the bottom of the ocean. So now we can finally focus on finishing what we came here to do. Okay, it's turn 140, and it's finally time to go. It's finally time to take out the Dark Elves. With the Dark Elves gone, Ulthwan will be ours, and the world will be safe again. So, let's get moving on that. Alright, Marathi, it's been real. It's been a really fun time watching you slowly infest the territory that I'm trying to purify, but I think now I'm just going to kill you. Let's declare war. Oh, they're allies with the Khemri. That's like mildly annoying. So this is yeah. going to be Torox against Marathi. This is a close victory, medium casualties, but you know what? I'm a nice guy. I'm going to give her the, the chance to at least fight us um, in hand-to-hand mm. -hand combat because she's level 50, I'm level 50. Let's see what happens. She has some pretty good equipment. Her army sucks. Level 50 is max, Her army yeah. is trash. I'm just curious to see how she stacks up against Torox. All right, running it down, straight down the middle. I think that they're Their one army. of the strongest factions of the game, and so am I. This is my strongest army by far. I think this is one of their this weaker not ones, going to... except for the fact they have a level 50 Marathi. So let's yeah. see how this translates in combat. Minotaur are just at least going 1v1 to smash Marathi right into her can. front line, or stop right in front of it too. That's kind of hard. That's why I'm not <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, things are going pretty good. Torox is plowing down the middle here. Okay, I'm trying to get my way into Marathi. That sounded kind of bad. I'm trying to oh get my. my I'm trying to make my way to Marathi here. It's a real fiesta of just violence. Torox is at full health. Marathi's about 40, 30, uh, okay, dropping fast. Uh, she's, oh she's not oh. holding up so well against Torox here Ooh. with the Sword of Cain. I can't even really yeah. visually identify where she's at, but you can see her icon she's... up there. She's not doing so great. All yeah. right, well, this was over in like 30 real-life seconds. That's great. Bruh. Decisive victory, low casualties at Vol's Anvil. Perfect. Plenish. Attack this one. Decisive victory, low casualties. Okay, perform this ritual. No one can settle there. Morker the Shadow Gave. Up here, Pyrrhic victory. Oh, I I'll could resolve definitely it. do better, Easy. but I really don't want to do a siege battle with cavalry, so I'll take this. Make a herdstone. Mm -hmm. He'll sit on it. Okay, Torox is just plowed through, like, uh, Marathi, Valzanville, Torsithai, Averthir. I'm losing momentum the more I do this, technically speaking. Now, the Dark Elves have lost their main commander in this region, but they do still have several armies scattered about. Many of them are in some level of disrepair, I think from attrition and maybe some combat they were in. So if I can just clean them up, we'll be in a really good position here. Fact, Kazrak is very close to Lothurn. I kind of want to go for it. I think I'm going to go for this. This is the main um, elven city. The game doesn't want to give us this. It wants to be a close defeat, but I think we're going to fight it. I think we're going to win. All right, here we are. This okay, is the see this. one and only Lothurn. Very lovely castle. It's about to become a lot less lovely because I'm going to pelt it with gigantic <laughs> yeah. boulders. The enemies are trying to kind of counter siege us with their towers here. It's working to some effect. Yeah, see that? That We don't like that. But eventually, you are going to run out of towers. I guess counter argument is eventually I'm going to run out of boulders. Oh <laughs> my god! Oh, that's hilarious. I was targeting these archers, clipped. but the harpies got in the way, so they started yeah. getting clipped by the boulders. <laughs> oh god, they're going- yeah, they're responding quite violently to my entrance, but that's totally fine. We just needed them to blob up Better for so us. Could spell them. We could get some uh, spells on them, and they, they did that exactly. All right, I'm ready for the ground invasion with um, my Ungor herd. The Dark Elves are calling in some bombardments on us using their uh, nearby black arcs. Basically just artillery strikes. God damn. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I forgot the, the Dark Elves had that. And it would make sense that it would be here since uh, it's on the island. And they have a lot of monsters here. It's just on These hydras look interesting, yeah, we too. We killed an enemy lord. My my lord here, Kazrak the One-Eye, he's just <laughs> dead. Just hanging on by a thr- Ah, shit. He's broken. He's getting out of here. He has negative four leadership. He's probably not coming back. Oh, no, he came back. <laughs> Anything happens to this man, he's just- He's done. We're both yeah. fairly beat up, and we're just throwing everything we have into this one last push. We're so close. We're so goddamn close. Why won't you people just die? <laughs> I don't want to do this. You're forcing my hand, okay? You're basically bashing your own brains out with these fucking boulders. Just give up. Well, that's all she wrote.
All right, so we got, like, just a little bit Good ahead try. of ourselves at the Battle of Lothurn, as evidenced by the fact that everyone a lot in of our army though. has either one health or they're dead, uh, but the enemies are similarly decomposing. No one really won this battle, but we especially didn't win it. I'll be back, though. They're damaged. They're vulnerable. Wait. Do I just go back and do it again? <laughs> Can I, think I just you do. attack Lothurn again? Oh, dude, I'm doing it. I'm doubling down. All of my Saigors will reload their ammunition. You can't convince me this isn't going to work. I won't listen to it. Oh, God. Oh, God, they're shooting. Oh, God, they're oh, shooting. No. This is bad. I gotta get out of here. This is a mistake. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Not ideal, but we've managed to destroy most of their towers, and we still have, what, six Cygors remaining? Now, you know, we lost, I don't know, three maybe? Now we can start blasting them with these boulders. The game doesn't want to believe in the Cygor cheese victory, but I need to believe in it. <laughs> oh, Snipe, no! That's a dead pussies. Hydra. <laughs> Where he is going, boys? You don't like my method They're of all warfare? pulling back. All right, now I have to execute the very Makes dangerous part of this plan, which is where I take my 164 <laughs> health Bray Shaman. I ride him Are right up actually to the do this? opponent's walls, and then I start spamming Spirit Leech on them in an attempt to kill them. The resilience of the Dark Elves is just, like, astonishing. I played the Dark Elves recently. They weren't that good. I mean, maybe I wasn't that good, but... Didn't feel like this. I'll just, I'll say that much. It did not feel like this. Oh! <laughs> Wait, was that a miscast? Did I just see a miscast in action? Was that what happened? Because I, I, I think Reggie double-clicked uh, the spell button, so that would be like a, a double cast or whatever it's called, but like... Oh no. Okay. So, um, Bray Shaman died. Oh, okay, we're getting her to land outside of the city gates. I'm assuming that she's oh. the only thing holding all of them together. And if I can get her to just stop breathing, then maybe everyone else will... Oh, oh, wow, oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. This might work. One more. Oh. Oh. Try again. N not not quite. Oh, she's running? Yes. <gasps> Ideal. Wait, okay. She's dead. Uh, Please. Are they going to Everyone start breaking? Else. There's there's nothing here for you. God, why? They're not why? breaking? What have I done to forsake you, Lord? That this is this is my <laughs> This is kind of sad. There, there's an entire city here full of like defenses and walls. <laughs> and then on both sides is just like a couple of people just fighting it out. Just holding on for dear life. <laughs> Can this even be called like a, a siege on the capital city? <laughs> oh god. Experience that I'm having right now. Oh no. They have an eagle bolt throwers. Oh, oh no. no. It's full health. It can just like one shot my guys. Oh god. I am vanquished. I have nothing left to give. Lothern. <laughs> okay, bro, you, you deserve Lothern. You can have it. All right, so yeah. in a stunning attempt to provoke a mental breakdown, I kind of gaslit myself into believing that I could take Lothurn on the second attempt. Anyway, here we are. I'll get him next time. Can I- wait, can I go back again? You, no! You're out of your no, goddamn don't do it mind again. if you think I'm no. not coming back again, you dumb oh son of a Oh my god. Bitch. Go! I'm Reggie, what are you me. doing? That's right, you're going in, buddy. You're going in. You're gonna- you're gonna kill the Shades. You're gonna do it, buddy. This is their commander right there. Chase him down. Chase him down. We're 344 health Kazrak. Making the difference. If yes. we actually okay. do this. The commander's dead. Yes. Yes. Artillery support. Danger close. <laughs> I think he's lost it at this point. I agree. Oh god, I smacked my own microphone. But I mean, like, considering how many hours steep this man is into this campaign and... <laughs> Oh, he probably just wants it to be over, regardless of his victory or not. I get it. I understand. This is what it's all been leading up to, boys. There's like no one left. Turn around. Turn around. <laughs> I should have turned around. I had to warn you. I'm pretty sure there's just fucking bolt throwers now. There they are. The bolt throwers. The last sign of resistance. They're even firing at us. 
Damn, they took oh, out no. one of my Cygors. Damn. All right, they got my last Cygor. <laughs> it's getting desperate oh, now. Oh god, Alice. it's down to Stay this. Stay on the Kazrak to clutch this along with my Minotaur. All right, everyone, put the buffs on. Time to go. We're rounding this corner. Oh jeez. That's where they're going to be waiting for us. The tower's oh, no. also there. Oh no, they're shooting. We're taking immediate fire from the tower. We're charging. <gasps> Surely if we kill every living thing on the map, then we'll have to get the victory then. They can't deny us any further, can it? These are very, very weak enemies, but they're somehow... <gasps> oh God, we did it! We actually did it! Let's we go! <laughs> Kazrak with 100 health. Oh my, my God. 68. We broke How them. How did we oh, do this? Christ. This is Total War Warhammer 3. You call victory, I suppose. <laughs> oh, man. You know, the fucked up thing is that they just have reinforcements that are just going to show up next turn. <laughs> okay, but the good thing is this is a part of a blood grounds. I'm going to loot it. And now it's it, it, there. It's secure. Yeah, it's, it's uninhabitable now. now. Yeah. Like, take a take a break, buddy. You've, you've earned a, a it day off or it. something. Okay, so this is, I think, the still the first turn of my war against the Dark Elves. And we cleaned out almost all of their holdings. We need to get them at the Shrine That's of Assyrian. All happened in just they one four turn. four places left here. And then... We can consider Althuan safe. Secure, even. Oh, right. I may as well. I've got some armies here. I may as well just hit them back home. Really put the pressure on them all around. I'm still in disbelief about Lothard. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I couldn't <laughs> believe it, too. Unreal. No, dude. Go fuck yourself. Seriously. I mean that, too. <laughs> all right, let's see. It's the Cult of Pleasure's turn. This is the first turn they have available after having the war declared on them. Let's see what they decide to do. How do, how do you react to what just happened? Okay, they're just kind of orbiting right now. Their naval presence is nothing to scoff at, but I am a I am a deranged lunatic. A man These guys on are almost dead. And I'm not going to stop. I will not stop until the world is safe from the pacifist high elves that have been terrorizing well, us for these many, many years. Over here. Their moral grandstanding, their high culture, ridiculous. Okay, they, they really did nothing with their turn. Okay, Shrine of Assyrian, done. Gone. Okay, Tordranil, done. White Peak, Torox is moving on White Peak. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Okay, the Dark Elves is that have it? only one settlement remaining. Oh, there it is, right yeah. It's right here. Unicorn Gate. It's being held by Shielda, the dire overseer, and some dickhead with a... <laughs> that's my... That's my champion's essence. I, I bought that for 10,000 gold. Give that back, you son of a bitch. Okay, <laughs> needless to say, we're going to kill them. Now, right now, I've got them surrounded by Gallic, um, Morger, and Pube. Pube the man Pube. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, these names are great. <laughs> oh, man. We'll, we'll get you fixed up later. All right, this is the last holdout of Dark Elves. Oh, oh, Decisive no. victory. You failed to spot the Actually, I don't give a fuck. And then the Unicorn <laughs> Gate. Okay, easy win. Oh, fuck, that's beautiful. All right, there you have it. Ulthwand is no more. We don't Success. have to worry about the High Elves. We have something way better, which is like a feral society of rabid animals. You know, I'm, I'm a protector of sorts. I have these herdstones here. No one's going to be able to settle any of these ruins as long as the herdstones are here. So I'm just going to put an army in every herdstone to protect it. And, you know, that combined with the garrison, I think will make this island virtually unassailable. So, mission accomplished. The only thing nice. left to do here is we're at the max ruination level. It unlocks Time for the final, the final battle. battle. So we're going to just go ahead and see what the final battle is. And I can't think of anyone I'd rather do the final battle with than Torox himself. <laughs> Let's obviously. see what happens. Okay, this is good. The oh, final battle, Bretonia. fittingly, is against the French. And also Bretonia and Carl. Franz, but mostly the French. Let's do this. We've got some reinforcements too. Kill the enemy lord to rout their forces. Oh, like that's... <laughs> Man, say less. That's all I'm good at with Torox. We have some beastmen allies on the right side. You can see... <laughs> They're level 17. Oh, we're oh grossly overleveled for this mission. The enemies what? are level 17, <sighs> which implies that I should be around level 17. I'm level yeah. 50 with the best army in the game. Oh, so this should we're be gonna fun. destroy the them. The Empire's deploying artillery on the hill. Yeah, they. That, I'll say this one thing. Is they do have the advantageous position of being at the top of a hill. So yeah, for sure. From underneath. I mean, especially with some of the crazy artillery the Empire gets, like having that kind of position, they would just rain down hellfire on you. I've seen their rocket artillery. That is just devastating. 
because uh, I, I watched it in Cleeper's video. But like level 17, didn't you need to, to max out your entire gauge in order to even do this final battle? I mean, would you even be able to get it by level 17? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe these mission battles were kind of balanced around um, a different campaign rather than the Immortal Empires, because with Immortal Empires, it can last for like several hundreds of turns. It's not great for us. Our reinforcements seem to be tackling the French largely by themselves, but I'll lend okay. them some minotaurs to help, uh, you know, ease the burden of it. This just feels like a nice, a nice little treat. You know, like when you have a hard day's work and then you buy yourself a tub of ice cream? This is my tub of ice cream right now. <laughs> Bretonia flanked the war herd with Pegasus Knights. See, there's oh, always no. more. They're always up to something. Oh, meanwhile, Carl Franz is... Carl Dead. Franz was fighting Thorox. Thorox is going to reposition and um, take out these reinforcements. And then we should be in a very strong position, let's say. All right, who's left? Who is left out here? Lewin. You gotta go assassinate him, and that should put an end to all of this nonsense. Go, Thorox, go. Go. Look at this man. He's right there, buddy. Just for dirt, use the Sword of Cain on your teammates. You don't have to tell anyone about that, though. <laughs> Okay, you know what? I think Reggie is going crazy not because of the amount of hours that he's been playing this campaign. It's because he's had the Sword of Cain this entire time. It's actually mentally affecting him, too. Oh no, Reggie. I hope he'll be okay after this. Uh, at least he got a War Thunder sponsorship before he went out. It's just between you and me. Yeah, it's just a just a little, little trick I learned. Oh, you're not going anywhere, Lou. Okay, I guess he is. He flew. Oh, oh that's yeah, that's away. the one thing. I'll, I'll give them that. I can't fly. I'm working yeah. on it. I can jump. Can't fly yet. Opportunity for more friendly Maybe fire. Maybe someday can Always fly. take it. The gap between you and your teammates has to be as wide as possible. Without units on the ground, the enemy's forced to land. Oh, did you <gasps> hear that, Lewin? Did you hear that you're going to Come be forced on, to Lewin. land now? Come back. Don't run. Aw. Decisive victory. Well, there you have it. With the final quest battle completed and the High Elf Menace completely eradicated, we can finally rest easy knowing that our labor has made the world a safer and more progressive place for all peoples. Except True. elves. And skeletons. Pirates. Lizards. Oh, all yes. Europeans. But for everyone else, Basically everybody it's else. Finally, don't yeah. forget to download War Thunder using my link below to receive your is. premium vehicles, XP boost, premium account, and a preposterous amount of silver lions. That's all for now. See you later. That was an awesome video. Love the different style of it. Also, don't forget to go and support Reggie. Thank you so much for watching.